We are gathered here today because we all have one thing in common. We love Pokemon. However, just because I love Pokemon doesn't mean I love everything about Pokemon. And today, I am here to talk to you about some things in Pokemon that I hate. These aren't your typical things that usually get talked about though. They're the kind of things that really aren't that big a deal, but also really grind my gears at the same time. I'm also approaching this from a satirical angle, so don't get too upset if I say something you don't like. But with that said, let's get into the hating. Okay, let's start off with one that really grinds my gears. The names of Black and White's player characters Hilbert and Hilda. Like, who came up with these names and thought they were a good idea? You do realize these characters aren't 70 years old, right? Hilbert and Hilda have some of the cooler designs of any of the player characters out there, but their English names are just so lame. According to Bulbapedia, they get their names from words meaning battle, which just like their design is cool. But you're telling me that Hilbert and Hilda are the absolute best names you could come up with in that department? Like, who genuinely is going to get hyped about playing a game where the hero's name is Hilbert? I don't know man, these names really grind my gears. They could have been something so much better. But I am only just getting started here on my rant of hatred. Something else that also grinds my gears is the design of the Sinnoh Elite Four member Flint. Flint is one of the Sinnoh game's strongest bosses, and one of the final bosses at that. So, who thought it was a good idea to base his design on Ronald freaking McDonald? He literally looks like a clown without actually trying to look like a clown. If his whole thing was that he was a clown, and he was this super strong, creepy clown guy, then there wouldn't be a problem because that would be the point. But it's the fact that he looks like a clown, not to mention a fast food mascot, without even trying to. And you know what? That kinda makes Flint a clown after all. Shaking my head. Okay, let's stop roasting characters for a second and go in a different direction. I kinda hate battle facilities, not gonna lie. I know everyone loves the Battle Frontier and stuff like that, but other than the new characters that they introduce, like the Frontier Brains, I couldn't really care less about them, and here's the reason why. Nearly all of the battle facilities throughout the various Pokemon games do not give your Pokemon any experience, and you do not get prize money for defeating trainers. What is the freaking point of battling, especially in the post-game once you've completed the main story and done pretty much all there is to do, if you can't level up your Pokemon or even earn money for winning? The answer is none. There is no point. I don't care about battle points, I don't care about silver and gold symbols, I just want to be able to train my Pokemon and, you know, actually get them stronger, and the fact that most of the time you cannot do that or earn money at these things at all is really dumb in my opinion. And speaking of the battle side of things, I have got a real issue with the normal type. I don't hate it specifically, but I really dislike how it is flagrantly misused. For instance, Porygon is a normal type. Porygon is a man-made Pokemon, and according to its Pokedex entries, was the first artificial Pokemon ever created. That is, by literal definition, not normal. It was literally one of a kind at one point. And don't even get me started on Arceus. Arceus is a god. A god. It is the most supreme being in the universe. That is not a normal thing, guys. Hate to break it to you. I get how it can be all types, but it absolutely should not be normal type in its base form. 
This is actually a perfect example of why there is room for more new types in Pokemon, like maybe a synthetic type for Porygon or a cosmic type for Arceus. But regardless, as of right now, those two are grossly mislabeled with their typings, and I for one will not stand for it. Speaking of Pokemon I have a problem with, I really despise Pokemon who carry around some kind of object as part of their design. Granted, some of them pull it off in a way where it feels like they get away with it a little better, but I just hate the concept in general. Like, why is some object that is completely detached from the Pokemon as a living creature considered part of its design? Am I just supposed to believe that every timber that exists on the entire planet always carries around a piece of wood with it at all times? The answer is no, because that makes no sense and is just stupid in general. I get if you want to factor that into their behavior or background as Pokemon, that they like to carry these objects around sometimes, but it should not be permanently present in their design. How about, instead of making Rillaboom carry around a drum all the time, you put that idea into its actual design so it doesn't look quite so plain? Like, put a drum into its chest somehow, so that it beats on its chest like a gorilla does, but also because it's playing a drum at the same time. That would be way more creative than it literally just carrying a drum around, and I just came up with that as I was writing this script. So, for all I care, these kind of Pokemon can just go away forever. Going back to character design, I'm really not a fan of Nate's design. When Black and White 2 first came out, in fact, I really hated it. I get they were going for a more athletic, exercise type getup, but what 12 to 14 year old child is going to be wearing a visor? He's not 50, Game Freak. Did you just run out of types of headwear to put on your protagonists or something? I'm pretty sure there's plenty more hats he could be wearing that look way better than that. And then they just added insult to injury by making his hair look like a freaking willow tree. Like, Nate has a really goofy appearance to him, and he doesn't really look like a heroic protagonist that most kids, or people in general, would want to play as. There are so many other alternative looks they could have went with still within the realm of this exercise theme that would have looked so much better, but they decided to do my man dirty instead. Okay, here is one that might get people really mad at me. I kind of, in a sense, hate the Pokemon anime, but let me explain myself before you bust out your torches and pitchforks. I don't directly hate the anime itself, I just kinda hate how it chooses to conduct itself. I've mentioned before how the anime has so much potential to be incredible, as some of the specials like Pokemon Generations and Pokemon Origins have shown, but instead it decides to settle for, in my opinion, relative mediocrity instead. I'm also aware that the anime is directed more towards younger kids, even more so than the games in fact, so I know that I'm not necessarily the target audience anymore, but I was at one point, and even when I was a kid, the anime lost me really fast. The original Kanto and Johto episodes are classics, but as soon as Yu-Gi-Oh came around, I lost interest in the Pokemon anime so fast because it was just so boring comparatively. The episodes were really repetitive and they just couldn't keep my attention even as an 8 to 10 year old kid who they were meant for. So yeah, I've just kind of always been very meh about the main series anime, and I'm just hoping they can live up to the potential they have with it at some point in the future. Moving along to something that more people can agree upon, my next rant concerns event Pokemon. This is pretty much the only typically hated thing on this list, but it made it anyway because I just hate the state of event Pokemon so freaking much. Stop gifting mythical Pokemon to us for free. We want to catch them in actual gameplay sequences, and we want lore to be attached to them while we do it. 
you had it right in Gen 4, but then you mucked it up right after that, and it seriously is one of the most disappointing parts about Pokemon for me right now. They sort of got back on track though with all the legendaries in the Crown Tundra, and they have an opportunity to revive it for real with the return of those Sinnoh events in the Gen 4 remakes. So help me Arceus, Game Freak, and Ilka, who is the company that's actually developing the remakes, they better get those right and not mess them up or we are going to have a serious problem. With almost a thousand Pokemon in existence, everyone has a few that they think are bad, but some are more universally disliked than others. And the more I think about it, the thing that really irks me about these kinds of Pokemon is how the heck they even made it into the games in the first place. Like, when you start looking into the Pokemon design process and how each design makes it into the games, it becomes even more baffling because Game Freak have been on record multiple times talking about how for each game, they make far more Pokemon than what actually makes the cut, and have outright said that the number of cut Pokemon has been in the hundreds on multiple occasions. So with so many Pokemon up for consideration, how does something like Girder make the final product? How is that amongst the best of the best that you came up with in terms of new Pokemon designs for Pokemon Black and White? How in the world did Ice Q make it into Sword and Shield when they probably cut hundreds of Pokemon from that game and also have hundreds, maybe even thousands of designs cut from other games just sitting in the vault that they could revive at any time? Is this really the best you got? I know for a fact that it's not, which is why it boggles my mind that Pokemon like this actually make it past the cutting room floor. And finally, speaking of Girder, my final point is how I kinda hate the Unova Pokedex. It's no secret that a lot of people don't like a lot of the Pokemon introduced in Gen 5, and I am amongst that group. While there are a lot of phenomenal Unova Pokemon, it also is easily the worst set of Pokemon in my opinion, and aside from some questionable designs, the thing that I really dislike is that the Unova Pokedex botched what very could have possibly been the best generation of Pokemon ever. Everything else about Gen 5 is phenomenal, but all of that gets overshadowed because the Pokemon designs are, by and large, pretty subpar. They even had a great approach for the Pokedex, which was to make all the Pokemon you can find in the main story just the new ones, meaning that you couldn't rely on any of the older ones and had to sort of embrace this new generation. That was an awesome idea, so why exactly did they then make Unova's Dex more or less a reboot of Kanto's Pokedex, with tons of copycat Pokemon? It doesn't make any sense. If they would have just really gone all in with the brand new Pokemon approach and just put out some better designs in general, Gen 5 would have been next level. It's still pretty dang fantastic, but it was definitely sabotaged by a lackluster Pokedex as well. So those are just a few things I hate about Pokemon. Feel free to let me know how wrong and terrible I am in the comments below, and let me know what grinds your gears in Pokemon as well. You can also put yourself in the running to win a free copy of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl simply by checking out my Pokemon remixes on Spotify. I'll be giving away a copy for every 5,000 new listeners I can get by the release of the games, and it supports the channel greatly as well. So check it out if you can, and with that said, I'll be back with another video very soon soon. Until then, as always, I love you guys, thanks for watching, remember this is just my opinion and if yours is different that's cool too, and I will smell you guys later.